Hey, I'm Anfa. This is Take Two. In this video, I want to show you a very, a very interesting plugin. This is live, I can't cut this out. A very interesting plugin that is called LPC or Linear Predictive Coding. The plugin is available on GitHub, as you will see, as you hopefully can see right now. Uh, I will post the link in the video description once the stream is over. The plugin is not packaged in any Linux distribution as far as I can tell, but it's very easy to install. And also the GitHub page covers pretty well what it does, how it's used and how to install it. I did pretty much this. Um, you just need a bunch of um, basic um, a bunch of basic uh, packages to, to compile it. And it's just two commands, basically just clone the GitHub repository, make, make install. It puts the plugin into your home directory. So not into any system directories that that's a good choice. I think it doesn't require you had to have super user privileges to install, etc. Okay. You can read up all of this uh, if you want. Maybe we can read into it later. But for now, let's just jump in to Ardor and see what we can do. This is Ardor 7.2, by the way. So to start off, I'm going to add maybe an audio track and I'm going to record a little bit of my voice. <gasps> Hello. Linear predictive coding, anyone? Okay, so we have a little bit of audio material to work with. I'm going to quickly concatenate that. It seems that the, the regions are now, are they additive? No, they're not, it's just a color scheme, I think. Okay, so this recording sounds like that. Hello, linear predictive coding, anyone? Can make it a little bit louder. Hello. Cool. So now we have our speech. Let me add the linear predictive coding plugin, linear predictive coding. As you can see, it's, um, it isn't called LPC. It's called linear predictive coding. And I made the mistake of trying to search for LPC and I found nothing. So <laughs> be smart not like me and just type in linear predictive coding because <laughs> you know the files are are named lpc.lv2 but the plugin itself is called linear predictive coding because of course it is <laughs> anyway let's double click to add this plugin in i'm going to move it up in the processor stack so that's be 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 before the fader and now let us play this sound Sounds really weird. Now, the, the manual to this plugin warns about possibly some very loud sounds that can be produced. So I'm going to add a limiter just to be safe. X42 DPL, my weapon of choice for making things loud. And do it cleanly. I could actually make it also, you know, a little bit louder. Maybe I'll do it before the fader so then I can fade it out. Right, so what how I understand what it does is it like tries to analyze the parameters of speech and then resynthesize the speech based on what it analyzes and it achieves some it arrives at some very interesting weird sounds that I think can be very useful for different purposes, basically for special effects. The main thing we can do is change the order. I think this is the order of filters. Hello. Linear predictive coding, anyone? So you can see the higher the order, the more mm, resolution we get. Maybe I will add a little bit of uh, a little bit of 
frequency analysis to the mix so we can better see what is going on inside of this with this sound what, what is happening here let me add a bunch of analysis plugins and maybe also a simple scope I guess mono will do because this is we're working on a mono signal um, where's my simple scope there it is all right so now we can see a few things I wonder if I can make this larger oh nice I think it uses the x42 GUI toolkit because unless this is a more common feature because it has the right click and scale options that's really cool because that's going to make it easier for for us to see what is going on can I make wolf shape a little bit smaller I think I can but it sorry wolf spectrum this is not wolf shaper this is wolf spectrum okay so Hello. Predictive coding, anyone? right Hello. if I turn the order down so this sounds like a sort of wave pushed through some filtering if you increase the order Hello. If we go to the maximum. Hello. Maybe I should have chosen a stereo version of the simple scope so that I could show the before and after signal in comparison. Let's do that. So that's going to be a bit more complicated to route. Okay, maybe not. Let's not waste time on that. All right, so order is just one parameter. There's also lots of other things we can do. The buffer size, for example. Hello. Linear predictive coding, Hello. Linear predictive coding, anyone? It seems like it's noisifying the input. Hello. Linear predictive coding, anyone? I found that... The larger the sample buffer, the better it can track lower frequencies. At the maximum, let's increase the order. And these are the very loud sounds that we were being warned about. <laughs> you probably can't see because the X42 limiter is behind my back. But <laughs> there's a big spike. <laughs> yep, uh, loud things are happening. Actually, we are analyzing the signals after the limiter. Maybe I'll put it. Be be maybe I'll put all the processing before it so we can see the true results. Maybe not. Okay, it doesn't. Seem Okay, if we reduce the order, we can also we also have something called pitch shift. I believe it tries to pitch track the voice. If you right click, it's gonna reset. Okay, we have some other options. So I believe Whisper, what Whisper does is it uses noise instead of a sort of oscillator for the bass tone. So interesting, the buffer size, smaller buffer sizes can sound better. Hello. Predictive coding, anyone? Now, just to just to show what we're doing, the original signal sounds like this. Hello, linear predictive coding, anyone? And this is what we're doing with it. Hello, linear predictive coding, anyone? Let's see what is OLA. Hello, linear predictive coding, anyone? 
without whisper. It seems to be more chaotic. Let's increase the buffer. I think it tries to be smoother. As you can see, it can produce some very interesting robotic sounding voice effects. Hello. Linear predictive coding, anyone? I think this is a very good tool to have in your tool belt um, because it gives vastly different results from any other voice processing you can do, like the usual stuff, pitch shifting, vocoding, ring modulation. This is a completely different way of altering vocal sounds. Glottal pulse. Hello. Yeah, the limiter is absolutely crucial in not blowing our ears off. Pre-emphasis. I guess that applies some equalization before it analyzes the signal to make it Hello. easier for it. <laughs> okay, this is like the basic things we can do, but there is another layer because this plugin has a MIDI input. So what happens if I <laughs> add a MIDI track? Hmm. Okay, that one doesn't work. So come on. I'm gonna close all of that. Maybe not all. Let's me add a MIDI track. Now let's call this MIDI. I'm going to right click pin connections to edit their uh, routing for the plugin. Now we have added a sidechain, but this is an audio sidechain, I believe. Yep, you see blue, blue port, green wire. This is an audio uh, port, so we need a MIDI port. So I'm right clicking. Yeah, I'm right clicking here on the port. And now I can right click here to add a MIDI port to my side chain. Now I have a MIDI port. Now I'm going to remove, right click again, remove mono, and now we have a MIDI input. So now I can go to tracks, MIDI out, tap this, and now this is feeding us MIDI fed from this track. You see that the uh, port has changed color, now it's purple, and I can route it in the red wire. And now we have MIDI input. If I enable record. It should already work. Uh, for test, I'm just going to add a note or two. I'm going to mute the track. Hello. Let's see. Maybe our mute. Maybe our mute is affecting the. Okay. All right. So, um, I guess the better way is to mute the MIDI plugin. So you can see we can tune our our robot voice to a to a pitch. Hello. Le linear linear. Linear predictive. So you can see we can do some interesting things with that because let's just get, give it some MIDI to work with. Hello, 
Now, this plugin also supports pitch bend. Oh, the zoom resets. And the basic tuning. So, this is standard concert 40, 440 hertz for A. Uh, and you can also set the bend range. So, this is two semitones, is the pitch bend. So, we can add a bender channel. and just do pitch bends. And now we've offset our note. So I'm gonna go back or up. Now let's go type the magic number. Eight, one, two, three. Can also pitch shift our results. We can go. Can I type in a number? I wonder. No, I can just shift click. Okay, so there isn't snapping. <laughs> quite impossible to enter precise numbers here. Whisper, because it uses noise and not the sort of wave, which is trying to imitate our vocal cords uh, flapping back and forth, Whisper disables our, our option to tune this to MIDI notes. Just like you can't really pitch your voice when you whisper. Because there isn't any oscillator working in your system. There is only noise generation. Hello, linear predictive coping, anyone? Hello, linear predictive coping, anyone? Hello, linear predictive coping, anyone? Hello, hello. <laughs> this doesn't sound like speech at all. This bears the minimal real resemblance. I believe glottal pulse is trying to uh, use some filtering on the salt of oscillator to make it sound more closer to real human vocal cords. Hello, linear predictive coping, anyone? So it does sound a bit more realistic. Hello, linear predictive coping, anyone? We can also increase the band range. Why seven semitones? Hello, linear predictive coding, anyone? Hello. If we set the pitch shift. Hello, linear predictive coding, anyone? Mm. Yeah, let's read about this plugin and see what we're doing and what we're missing. So, order. The order of the filter generated by the LPC engine. Higher values can approximate the frequencies of the original sound more closely, but also incur a higher performance cost, so try lowering the setting if popping X runs occur. Warning. If the order parameter is set high enough, then loud high-pitched resonances can show up. As a result, I highly recommend adding a peak limiter after this plugin in your DAW. That's what we did. And that's why we did it. Buffer size sets the size of the audio buffers used by the LPC engine. Higher values give higher quality output for lower pitched voices, but also significantly increase the performance cost. Try turning this up if the pitch part of the voice is being synthesized as noise. Conversely, if popping X runs occur, then try lowering the setting. Whisper. Forces all audio to be treated as unpitched, which causes the excitation signal to always be noise. This creates a whisper-like effect. Okay, so it does try to detect if the sound it 
it's analyzing is a vowel or a plosive or like a sibilant. Yeah, but Whisper forces it to always treat all sounds like sibilants. OLA enables disables overlap add OLA mode. Can make the audio sound smoother, but can also cause some dissonance when used with singing. Also increases the CPU load of the plugin significantly. Works better at higher buffer sizes. Glottal pulse. Instead of using a pulse wave, oh, so it's not a sort of wave, as the LPC excitation signal, use a glottal pop sample. Can make the resulting audio sound slightly more realistic. Okay, so it's first it wasn't a sawtooth wave, it was a pulse. So I I assume it's kind of like a Dirac pulse and a, a one single sample pulse. Mm. And this uses a recorded sample instead. Interesting. I is it something like I don't know how they recorded that. It would be interesting to take apart this plugin and see what's inside. Mm. Actually, we can try and do that. Is What is there? Is there an audio file in here? I don't see anything. Nope. Maybe this sample is so small that it's basically stored as data. Yeah, I'm not gonna go into that. Pre-emphasis. Emphasizes the input signal using a high-pass filter prior to running the LPC analysis. Also de-emphasizes the signal output from the LPC from the LPC synthesizer afterwards. I am not sure if you can de-emphasize using a high-pass filter, because a high-pass filter would remove all content. So maybe it's a high, it's a low shell filter. I know, I don't know. Pitch shift. Pitch shifts the output audio up or down. Can create some neat effects. This setting does nothing if Whisper is enabled, obviously. I wish it would snap, there was an option to snap to like integer values. Or at least type in your own number. MIDI tuning sets the root frequency of the MIDI note scale. Default to A44 defaults to A440. MIDI pit band range sets the range of the MIDI pitch band. There's a to-do of things that needs that were intended to be done, but they're never done, at least not, not yet. Maybe if this plugin sees uh, increased, um, increased uh, interest, then the, the developer would come back and work on it again. I think it would be awesome because this is a very unique thing. There is some, um, Linear Predictive Coding is open source software, but it's not in the form of a plugin. I have found RT underscore LPC, a real-time LPC analysis and synthesis visualization software. This seems to run on Mac, but it's all available for Linux and Windows as well. There's also MIDI controlled pitch. I am not sure, but I think this could have, this was possibly used as a basis for the lpc.lv2 plugin. So maybe this is a good idea to explore if you want to get into LPC a bit more. Is this? Okay. There is a so that's an article. Yeah. I don't know if the, the quote. Uh... Yeah. Okay. So sound labs, this is one of the, one of the quoted um, references. There's also another one. Yep. So I think this is a neat plugin. It can do some really cool things with speech, but not only it can do some weird stuff with other inputs because it, it's not meant to do any of that so i think when you you know feed it some interesting interesting sounds it can also be a cool effect and 
yeah, I think it's it's worth remembering that it exists and I've used it on some vocals and some tracks to, to give it them a little bit of distinct robotic sound and I think it works great because it's very unique. I did not hear anything like that um, pretty much. Yeah, I think that's all for today. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was interesting or useful. Hopefully you will want to give LPC or linear predictive coding a shot and see what it can do for you. Maybe some interesting effects for your vocals or other sounds, synthetic or otherwise. I wonder how it would work on like um, pitched instruments like a guitar um, or on sung vocals. I don't know because it should kind of like track this. Yeah, LPC. A small interesting plugin that I hope would get some more love because I think it deserves it. Uh, it's not very complex, not very terrifically made, but it does the job. It's It has quite a lot of options and I think it's really cool. It would be awesome if you could, for example, you know, load your own waveform or maybe even use another signal as a waveform that can be like, you know, fed and kind of like a wave, like a vocoder where it could like sample cycles of incoming waveforms. So you can pretty much do like wavetable synthesis almost. I think that could be possible. Yeah, if anybody has any ideas, this, you know, this is open source, everything is doable. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, huge thanks to everyone who is supporting my work financially. If you, dear viewer, would like to join these people and help me keep making videos like this one, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa. Also, maybe I should have mentioned this before, if you want to meet other people who are doing open source software-based music production and sound processing design, etc. Check out my community chat at chat.anfa.xyz. There's hundreds, almost a thousand people there, and it's a great place if you want to get into Linux audio in general and open source audio. Uh, you know, people are helping each other and solving each other's problems, which is cool. And giving assistance there is much easier than in the YouTube comments. That sucks. Okay, that's all for today. <laughs>